2024 rollerblading trend forecast. What tricks are in? What setups will everybody be using? Where will people be skating? What hairstyles are popping off? Who's climbing up the ranks in terms of popularity? And what needs to get in the bin? Just please leave. All the stunts are performed by professionals. Do not attempt this yourself. Call me Mystic Moisey, because here's a list of predictions I got right last time. Team tour videos, spot on. Mesmer leading the charge as always. Roche's got involved. USD went on a trip. Skaters in different environments to their local just works. Towins. In one of the most viewed aggressive skating edits last year, Ilya Savosin gets towed into and along a trick by a horse. Now I'm not recommending you take a horse down to your local skate park, but you can always use like the slingshot one where your mate grabs your arm and just slingshots you, or get towed in by a dog. Maybe don't do that one either. An e-scooter, why not? Harder to skate skates. Correct. Prime example, Nick Labar in Brain God. Maximum style, because the skates won't allow you to do the tricks in any other way. And maximum respect. Fucking spectacular. And that is still very much in this year. Stop making things easier. Like, they don't give baseball bats to boxers, do they? Like, <laughs> that's not the point. The point is to use your hands. Like, that's the challenge. Easier skates is essentially like, I don't know, Faking pictures, like what's next? Stabilizers and like safety ropes and stuff like that. If you're a kid and you're just learning, all those things are perfectly fine though. Jorts, that was an easy prediction, but it was true. Got to the point where you could actually identify skaters by uh, their knobbly shins. I should be on some sort of advisory board for all of these brands. Although I did get uh, Long John Bellinos wrong. That didn't really kick off in the way I thought it would. This year, cab drivers are back in. I feel like the cab driver fell off the face of the earth at one point. It was like, Borderline illegal, but it is back. Silverback Gorillas, back. VG9, back to basics, back. Burt Bacharach, back. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Burt Bacharach. Prime example, Stuart Batty, unreal poise and control. Pat Ridder, exquisite form. Thing is with the cab driver, you've got to invest into that commitment. You've got to like, nestle into it like it's a double down duck pillow. Tuck into it like you've been out all weekend and somebody just offered you a Twix. There is risks with the cab driver because if like one part of it, one element of it goes wrong, it looks totally heinous. You've got to be fully yin and yang man, like totally balanced without that thing. Other historical examples include Dre Powell in Closer in VG19. You've also got Vinnie Minton, of course, and then you have got uh, Rob G. And I almost have got Kate, Katie, Kate Anidai, VG5 Supernatural. Absolutely phenomenal. Maybe one of the best ever. Secret sections are coming back. What the hell happened to secret sections? Wh whose idea was it to get rid of them? What idiot decided that? Secret sections were amazing and everybody loved them. Like, remember Brain Fear Gone when the words like rearranged to spell Aaron Feinberg's name wrong? Doesn't matter they spelt it wrong, it was still so exciting. You're like, oh shit, that bed man, he's absolutely going off. We need more of that. Or like when DVDs had like little secret sections in there, something like little uh, Easter eggs you could find, there was an extra clip or something like that. Just because we don't have VHS anymore or like nobody's really using DVDs, doesn't mean you can't have like a secret section at the end of an online edit. You can still use anagrams as well, man. Call a video LA Workboxes, anagram of Alex Broskow. And also, like, he lives in LA and like, I'm pretty sure he's moved a few boxes at the 909 warehouse. Save a person's promotion from like amateur to pro for team videos. Like, oh, everybody else can surprise him at the end of it. They are, there you go, mate. Like, you're pro now. Like, that'd be incredible, man. Another team video at the end, just have a secret section being like, boom, this person's got a pro skate and this is what it looks like. Whoa, oh my God. Skating in Barcelona. Out. It's getting anywhere else in the world. In. Now let me explain. Tape 3 destroyed Barcelona. Reason why it was so good, because they approached everything completely differently. They revived it. The city and skate spots were on like their last legs, man. They were on life support. Like the plug was about to be pulled. Tape 3 came along with the like boosters, the chest boosters, and right, brought it back to life, but then <laughs> only just to kill it off. Of course, if you live there, like, you can't be expected to leave every time you want to put out a bit of skating. So, no, 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 no. It's not about that. And if you've never been there before, absolutely, you have to go there. You have no excuses. You have to go there and skate because it's an absolute playground. But another edit, skate in Barcelona, skate in the same spot. Hey, Piss off. Give the locals a day off like just go anywhere in the world like spin a globe and go anywhere in the world go into a travel agent like they'll be pleased at a company like where's the iron apparatus where's the bogner edits like 
get on down to Jersey. We've just got like the biggest outdoor free skate park in the whole of the UK. It's enormous. Go there and warm up and then skate the mystery spots of Jersey. Look at every release from the Cayenne Project. Anything Bean is involved with, like Don West, Blade in Burma. You know when parks get absolutely abused in the summer, like London Fields, if you look at it at the end of the summer, it looks like there's been a war there or something. Same for Barcelona, man. Give it time to rego its grass. Go somewhere else for a bit, let Barcelona recover, do something different. I love making these videos, but this channel can only survive with your support. So if you'd like to help me out, like a like is amazing, leaving comments is really great. There's also a Patreon, there's channel membership, exclusive videos, that kind of stuff. There's merch you can get a hold of as well. And genuinely, it does help to keep this channel going. So cheers. Grown tubes in. You know those tubes and you like tip them upside down and they go, oh, oh, oh. No need to, to blow your voice box out anymore, like screaming when somebody lands a trick. Just just get the grain tube going. Oh, oh, sign of appreciation. Imagine you've fallen over and you've like dusted up all your hands and they're really sore. You can't be clapping people or like giving high fives. Grain tube again. Oh, oh. Imagine Winter Clash, a thousand grown tubes. Like, we're at the like, final heats, people are doing their final trick. Somebody lands an absolute banger. Like, a thousand people. Beautiful. <laughs> Caveman Rocker in hard, like a stick of rock from Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Flat is the librarian setup, the educated man, the student always studying. But the librarian is getting a bit loud, you know. It's meant to be quiet in there, so that one needs to, like, pipe down a little bit. Anti-rocker or freestyle, it's like you want to break free, but, you know, do you really want to go that wild? Do you really? I don't think you do. You seem to be doing a little bit of hand-holding there. You're not, like, you're not really cutting loose. Caveman is... I'm, I'm out of here, like, I don't care about the rules, I don't care about society, nothing. I'm just going berserk for rollerblading. Using a frame in a way it's not really designed for, it, like, that just speaks to the heart and, like, the origins of skating, you know? Remember them, like, them first aggressive rollerbladers, like, they were skating on skates that weren't made for it at all, man, but they were just doing it, and I, I know there's a lot of people who are coming back to skating now and, like, they want to recapture their youth. What better way? Then getting those anti-rockers or middle wheels and just lobbing them, throwing them away. Recapture your youth that way, mate. Be wild and free. Just think about the grinding and the sliding around. Don't even don't even bother with the actual skating up. It doesn't matter. Just run and jump. Panel-based voting for awards. In. It is going to be big this year. It's great having like awards to celebrate all the great achievements throughout a year. And it's like specifically important that the consumers and the fans like get their say and like share their opinions but like we also need like a panel voting for stuff because you know at times we can't really be trusted like our opinions get swayed way too easily you know there's plenty of like things that will make us overlook the actual substance within these edits or like whatever this brand has done it like it might not even be that like oh you're voting for the person you really really love it might come down to like you're voting for anybody else apart from this other person because you really don't like them. People will vote multiple times. They will go absolutely mad entering just to see like their mate get listed in the top three or their mate win. We need a council of prominent figures who are active within rollerblading to pick an industry winner. That's what we want. We want an industry winner. We want to know like a group of like this person's peers, supposed experts, have picked the winner and that is like the true winner and I have a sneaking suspicion that is going to be happening this year in a very big way and I know people are going to be like oh yeah we should get legends from the past nah fuck off unless they're actually active unless they've actually really kept up with it and watched it don't need somebody coming back who's paid no interest in it in the last 10 years to just go oh I like this person because that's how I used to skate like 10 years ago he doesn't have a clue what's going on no thanks so what should people be wearing in 2024 Roll next. <laughs> Statistics show like the average age is like creeping up a little bit. Like you can't just have a wardrobe full of t-shirts with massive designs all over them. Like embrace your age, embrace sophistication. Like when security sees a group of rollerbladers that look like they're in a gang from the Warriors, like 
It's an instant kick out, isn't it? You don't have a chance. But imagine he comes bowling over to you and you've got a roll neck on. He starts to second guess his whole life. He's like, what's going on here? Are you like a <laughs> jazz band or something? Like, Are you on a tour? Would you like some organic wine maybe? Telling your partner you just bought another t-shirt for rollerblading could be grounds for like instant dismissal. Like, Sorry, what does that say? Skull fuck. That just screams 45 year old still on the sesh who like refers to himself as like the sesh lord while he's chatting up teenagers. Grow up, skate fast and die. I'm sorry, what? Does your child know that this is your ethos? Like you get one hour to skate a week, matey. In that one hour, don't be dying is inexcusable. You've got to pick your daughter up at 7.30 after netball. Dying and you not turning up is not going to be an excuse I accept. Skate fast and die. No, <laughs> skate within your limits and pay the mortgage. The roll neck is quite practical as well. Like keep the neck warm in the summertime. You can just rip the sleeves off. That's a very like exotic look. Would like break the ice for conversations when people see you skating around in a sleeveless roll neck. The 20th winter clash is on the way and you're going to want to put in that visa application with your partner. If you bound in there in a roll neck, mate the conversation is going to go smooth as you like she'll she might just look at you and just go whatever you want you've got it and you hey take a week go on a little adventure with your boys 360 flat spins and now i mean specifically 360 flat spins whatever happened to them or like on a spine a 360 flat spin oh my goodness i remember seeing guy crawford do, i'm sure it was guy crawford i'm never going to be able to find the footage but he did the most stunning one i've ever seen it was like something out of swan lake it was just immaculate if people do 540 flat spins they tend to like you know they're flat for a bit and then they come out of it and you're like is that really a flat spin but the 360 just seems to be the right amount like you cut you've got obviously you've got to come out of it to drop back in again but like it seems to be the right amount of flat there's not there's not so much like that extra bit of spin when you're in a normal position or something 360 flat spin bring it back that's all i want to see on spines from now on that's the only air i want to see really that and like a that like flying fish one copying other brands out hard like abd tricks is like fairly whiffy abd clothing is a stinker nobody's gonna know nobody's gonna know they're gonna know how would they know well, it is a bit obvious rollerblading is so small People are just gonna know. There's like already limited options. Why limit that even further with two options that are exactly the same? It's a bit Norman Bates dressing as his mother. We may as well start wearing uniforms. Like one person makes some designs and then all the other brands just like change out the other names, put their brand on it. Job's done. It like feels a bit like Mark Zuckerberg's wardrobe man, like devoid of any kind of personality. Jarvis also likes to join our family for playtime. Who should we tickle next? Call the police now. Don't even try anymore. Just get AI to like generate everything you do. Remove any sign of human creativity. Like at least with Power Slide, when they loan out their shells and stuff like that, you all know like it's all Power Slides. But the people that do loan them off them. At least they try a little bit. This is just like taking your turn on the local bike. We can't be celebrating creativity in like people skating, then using exactly zero creativity when we're designing the clothes, like pushing variety, but then selling exactly the same stuff as each other. Rip stuff from outside brands and just like change it like a little bit, or even like take heavy inspiration from like older rollerblading designs and stuff like that. Like. Not like stealing off your neighbour. When I needed a neighbour, were you there? Were you there? When I needed a neighbour, were you there? Not, I'll just have that house. Yeah, we'll have the same number. Newcastle United whooping Tottenham. In. Uh, in four times, actually. Acid drop grinds. You know where, like, you drop or you jump straight into a grind from, like, a stationary position. Like, so sick. Save all your energy. Fuck the skating a bit off and just focus on taking that hit when you drop onto the ledge or rail. You're gonna have to like tense up like somebody's about to sock you in the stomach like with all their life. You're just gonna take it man, proper strain in it. Like world's strongest man when they're lifting those like atlas balls or like trying to drag a mini along and that. That's what it's gonna be. It's like, it's a step up from slappy grinds and like this year it's gonna be who can take the biggest drop onto a rail and actually grind out the thing. Beef, absolutely in 
Kendrick dropped a couple of verses and the rap world went spiraling and everyone's loving it. I've been watching full breakdowns of verses and all sorts, spending a couple of hours just like going through every single lyric on Genius and I cannot get enough of it. Let's have a bit of that in skating. Mom, I don't like his voice. I don't, I don't like, I don't like what he talks about. I don't, I don't talk. I be trying to I don't tell like his before we start slagging each other off though let's be clear here i'm not talking like let's get really personal with each other and start calling out people's mums and stuff like that no 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 the world is like already pretty miserable at the moment so i'm talking more like yeah competitive beef you're more like wwf style beef oh brother my edit it's coming my chief brother your edit wasn't nothing brother, you were lathering all over the place man. Have full on boxing or like UFC style press conferences, like two people about to drop on the same day and they can like big up their own projects, oh, it'd be absolutely amazing, I'd love to host one of these things and like the thing is like it just brings a bit more like competitive spirit you know, we're gonna get more edits out of this, people are gonna try more, we're gonna get more content, the, the interviews will be incredible. Julian Kudo in, where's a roll neck, skates caveman, triple in. He skates like a rascal kid, he is the embodiment of that feeling when you found out about grinding and decided this is the best thing ever, this is all I ever want to do. I think for a while Julian wasn't in vogue, maybe because people thought like he was a little bit arrogant, a little bit too rowdy, like when he came on the scene he was young and he just started like winning loads of stuff and maybe he was a little bit mouthy, but this is like a beautiful redemption story man, he's cleaned up his act man, he's got rid of the booze, he had that like amazing uh, interview on Jump Street, presented himself really well, he became more focused, like he went fully unapologetically ham on skating when the rest of like everybody else, when the trends were like trying to be a little bit more creative, like hyper focused on style, he was just like, do you know what? I don't care. And I think, that, <laughs> I think that's kind of important and that's good. He's competitive and he tries and there's absolutely nothing wrong with trying and we should celebrate that. Like he'll enter any comp and go <laughs> absolutely bananas and you've got to give it to him that he turns up every comp like he really does give it. And he also, when he doesn't win, he doesn't complain. He's just like, I'm, I'm going to keep coming back and keep winning stuff or trying to win stuff at least. And that's amazing. He's got better filmers because he's trying to up his game there. Best of all, he does not give a shit. <laughs> Obviously he cares about like rollerblading, he cares about doing good, but more so just for him. He doesn't really care about like anything else or what people think about his stuff. He's just going to go out there and he's going to do it. And that's really fun to watch. Mullets out. Market was saturated and no one wears a mullet better than a horse. Curly bouncy berms and beehives in like when somebody lands a trick with a perm and it like bounces all over the place that's amazing imagine and also trying to keep like a beehive up on your head when you're trying to do tricks skills i want to see it using stock images in designs out jesus wept like as i said before like yeah rip off like brands from outside of rollerblading like change it a little bit give nods to like past brands and designs like i think that's like kind of cool a little bit of a nod using actual stock images this is a con it, it just comes across as like indefensibly lazy to me like like using a like getting a keyboard and you know like using one of the default songs on there and like trying to pass that off as your own thing like, The industry is spilling over with creative people. And I don't just mean like creative skaters. I mean like people who actually like work in design and actually could do this. But like you'd rather actually pay Vector Stock, uh, potentially Vecteezy, a site called Vecteezy is getting money. And then you're going to rob some kid of it using a bit of clip art, like charging him like 40 euros for like some clip art. Like what a rip off. We're just ignoring the fact that it looks like something out of like Camden Market here. There's so many other better ways you can do it. Lean into your creative side, like just draw it yourself and like get somebody to like put that image into like Photoshop or like Adobe Illustrator or something, like anything, but using like vector stock. A media and apparel brand dedicated to celebrating the original scenes and artists within rollerblading. Why didn't you use the artist then? Illusions in. I'm talking the full 
gambit. I'm talking like magic eye thumbnails for like YouTube videos. I'm talking like magic eye pictures for like <laughs> in the magazines as well. You've got like squiff your eyes up to see what the person's doing, like what trick they're doing. I'm talking like magic eye t-shirts or like absolutely everything. Let's get on to it. But also I'm talking illusions like this trick from Nate. That absolutely blew my mind. I couldn't work out what was going on. I thought it was in reverse or like Colin Martin, master of the dark arts. More stuff like that, that is in trend. It kind of leans into more rollerblading like centric tricks. I think a big trend this year is just gonna be accepting that there's some really weird stuff in rollerblading and we should embrace that, man. We should own that and like see where it takes us. Rollerblading becoming the magicians of extreme sports. Standard skates, video reviews. That stock is absolutely flying. Loads of people, loads of people have done reviews and it's, it's not gonna stop. Once somebody sees, oh, that person's had a go at it, like, I'm pretty sure I can have a go at it as well. I'm going to throw my opinion into the uh, into the ring. They're going to do it. It's just going to keep rising. It's not something that I would personally invest in, but I just can't deny the signs that it's just going to keep growing. It's going to get to the point where the standard skate is the most reviewed skate in the history of rollerblading. Every single owner is going to have like reviewed it. I don't know if like Law <laughs> slipped him like a little message in there going, do a review and I'll chuck you in like a 50-50 frame or something like that. Because everybody's doing it. <laughs> and the thing is like, everybody's got different feet. Everybody's got like bunions, weird toes. So they're talking about fit and you're just like, I'm never going to know unless I try it myself. And then that person, when they do try it themselves, they're going to do a review about their weird foot and about the strange way that they skate. Oh, these, these are great for these grinds on me. I don't grind like you. <laughs> the only way I'm actually truly going to find out is by getting them myself. But that's not going to stop anybody. The reviews are just going to keep flooding in until the only content people can ever find about rollerblading will be standard skate reviews. The tramp stamp is in. The best position you can get a tattoo is on your lower back. The arms, mate, overdone. The hands only get that if you're a sailor. And I know 99% of you are not sailors. Neck, crazy, face. Do you, do you want gainful employment or not? But yeah, fair play to you if you're doing that one. I don't, I probably won't meddle with you. The tramp stamp though, glorious. Like go for anything, go for like something tribal, traditional, go for some roses, go for some flowers. Get a skate like everybody else does and make sure that like when they like stretch it so it like fits on your back properly, make sure they skew it so it looks really <laughs> weird and bulbous like every tattoo of a rollerblade ever why do they look so out of proportion man who are these people going to to get their tattoos either way when you're skating and you jump up and your shirt lifts up and they see that rems 03 oh sick that guy is sick <laughs> he's been doing it for ages he must love rollerblading i might get one no one wants to see your boxes so if your boxes are riding high it's cut a little window in them so you can see the tramp stamp. Skipping, a great way to complement your rollerblading. Like a lot of people say running, maybe you don't want to go running. You have to find somewhere to run, like a track and stuff like that. Weather could be awful. You don't want to buy like a gym membership or a running machine at home. Skipping, you can just use a rope. You probably like put two towels together and use that instead. It's great for your calves, great for your thighs. You might even like start to learn tricks, man. Get a whole nother Instagram profile going get new friends outside of the rollerblading world <laughs> you might start making youtube videos about skipping and it might blow up for you so yeah skipping adapter going to leave rollerblading i think they actually might move into non-stick frying pans and pots and stuff like that carbon fiber like uh, utensils carbon fiber trousers and hats carbon fiber pencil cases anything carbon fiber but nothing to do with rollerblading i think that's the way they're going i think they realize like they might have messed things up a little bit in rollerblading, which is a shame because like the skates do look really good, but I think they've got other ideas now. Carbon fiber tables, carbon fiber cat flaps, thumb wars in. Like, have you ever been like 15 minutes deep into a thumb war? Like both of you like sweaty palms and you're wriggling that thumb everywhere and they've got like a double jointed thumb and they're just doing all sorts of like illegal maneuvers and the sweat's like <laughs> dripping into your eyeballs and it's stinging and somehow you just get that grip oh my goodness the elation is unbelievable be a man thumb wars quality in quantity <coughs> i don't really mean for things like instagram and tiktok and stuff like that where you've kind of You've got to post all the time for the algorithms and stuff like that, but 
you don't have to be a slave to the system. It's really just rewarding the things that tend to keep people back addictively. The business model is addiction in this race to the bottom of the brainstem for attention. Why did you start skating in the first place? You didn't start skating to get the views. You didn't start skating to be told by some app, we want you to post every day. It's got a loop <laughs> and uh, it's got to have a catch and a hook in there or something like that. Or it's got to be like an insane trick. Like people feel like undervalued for just doing their thing. Just go away. Take a break from that. Move in silence. Work on a bigger video. Work on a bigger piece. Just like illegal smiles or tape free or a Bebus brain god. Craft something. You can look back on and go, I was, I'm really proud of all the effort that I put into that because, you know, it was for me, it was so long that nobody even watched it all the way through. We only got this many views. I could have just posted a single clip on Instagram and it'll go loads of views. But like, are you really going to look back on one of your Instagram clips and go, oh, wow, like that was incredible. Like, I'm really proud of that moment. You might be like, oh, sick. Like, I got, like, got a load of views. If you make a big project, with your boys, that's time out, that's planning. It's going to be so much more rewarding. And then you can just use those clips on Instagram anyway, later. Double win. Let me know your predictions for the rest of the year. Cheers to my Patreons and channel members. I, I simply couldn't do this without your support, so I greatly appreciate it. Here's a couple of other videos you can watch until I'm back. Uh, see you again soon. Spot your dog.